What's going on everyone, it's your Ripple here, and welcome to my Destiny video. In this video I'm actually going to be explaining how to get the Touch of Malice, and also a little review of the Touch of Malice with all the perks on it. First off, the Touch of Malice is actually a new exotic scout rifle that players can obtain from Eris Morn after completing several different quest lines. The hunt for this weapon actually begins once you decide to turn in a single calcified fragment to Eris Morn. In order to complete the Shattered Pass quest, you'll need to obtain 5 calcified fragments from the Dreadnought. These items can be hidden in the various chests and also the alcoves of the Dreadnought, and can mostly be found during patrol. Once you finally get the Shattered Pass quest completed, the remainder of that quest line is unrelated to the journey that you're trying to take. However, once you obtain 15 calcified fragments from the Dreadnought, you will be granted the quest Hunger Pangs which requires you to kill Brachus, taken Centrion, in the salt mines in Bunker War 4. Once you have taken out Brachus at the bottom of the salt mines, you'll need to either drop in the King's Fall raid, or complete the entire Taken War questline and complete the Road to King's Fall quest that Eris gives you afterwards, actually. If you decide to drop into the raid, simply drop back out and return to the tower to receive the quest. So once you go into the raid, just head back out of there and return to the tower once again and receive that quest, which the quest is called the Old Hunger. This quest actually requires that you gather three drops from the raid. The Blade of Famine from the War Priest, the Shroud of Ur Anuk from the Death Singers, and the Ravenous Heart from Oryx himself. Once you have completed the raid and gathered these materials for this quest line, it's time to collect some more items for Eris. This time around, you need to collect 25 Worm Spore, 50 Hadium Flakes, and 50 Weapon Parts. Once you have collected these items, Eris will actually offer you an antiquated ruin for the Court of Oryx, which this is a higher stage ruin to sacrifice in the Court of Oryx. So of course take the antiquated ruin, but the quest line isn't quite over yet. To continue, you're actually going to need to gather up 30 total calcified fragments. Once you have collected 30 calcified fragments, Eris will offer the next step of the Hunger Pains quest, which requires you to load into a special heroic version of the Undying Mind Strike and kill a special knight called Morgoth, Lorekeeper. You'll need to fight all the way to the boss in the strike and more goths should appear before you finish off the strike. Just make sure you don't actually kill the boss before you kill Morgath. Okay, so that's the final step. Once you end up turning in that bounty, you'll need to gather up an additional calcified fragments. And once you have 45 total, the final quest of the Hunger Pains quest line will be given to you by heirs. This step requires you to travel back to a special version of the Phobos mission and kill a wizard named Marzik, the Blight Caller who spawns right before the Echo of Oryx boss dies. Once you have killed this wizard, grab your fastest ship and make your way back to the tower. Speak to Eris Morn and she will grant you the Touch of Malice Scout Rifle. And also you should get this nice emblem called the Pitiless Bargain as well. It's a new legendary emblem that comes with this quest completion too. And in case you guys didn't really get the steps that I just explained right there, well then just simply replay the video and hopefully that helps you out. Anywho, the weapon perks on this amazing exotic scout rifle, starting with the touch of malice, final round of the magazine regenerates and deals bonus damage at the cost of the wielder's life force. So that final round never runs out. You pretty much have infinity ammo, actually you do, but it's going to cost you. It's going to cost some of your health each time you fire a shot in the final round. And not to mention this can end up killing you. So be careful when using this. One of the hidden perks that it doesn't really say on this scout rifle is that it does have auto fire as well. You can just hold down the trigger to keep shooting with it, which is nice. For the selectable perks though, it has soft ballistics, smooth ballistics, and my personal favorite that I like using, smart drift control. Up next it has the eye of storm perk, which this is a nice perk since the intrinsic perk, touch of malice, you know, destroys your health at the final round. As you guys can see here, what the Eye of Storm does, this weapon becomes more accurate as your health gets lower. So that's pretty convenient to have while using the Touch of Malice perk. Anyways, for the next selectable perks, it has Snapshot, Hammer Forged, and Flared Magwell. I prefer to actually be using Hammer Forged just because of that boost that it actually gives you, but I guess it all depends on your game style. If you like to reload fast instead of using that Touch of Malice perk, like you want to hurry up and get that reloading done with just because you don't want to keep using that Touch of Malice perk that, you know, drains your health at the final round, well then hey, I might suggest to you to use Flared Magwell. Then again, it just all depends on your play style. Lastly though, for the last perk on this Exotic Scout Rifle, it has Touch of Mercy. 
three rapid kills will return a portion of the wielder's health. And let me just say this is extremely beneficial for the one perk that actually drains your health at the final round. If you can actually get three fast enough kills, well then hey, it's not really going to be affecting you too much when you're draining your health from that final round perk. So basically, this weapon does great for a ton of enemies surrounding you. My personal opinion of what this weapon does best against would be the enemy type Hive, just because there are so many of them that come at you at once. And also not to mention, in case you guys are wondering about the PvP world with this weapon, let me just say it is extremely situational. It all depends on the person's game style. If you find yourself actually, you know, taking a lot of damage in gunfights, I don't really suggest this weapon, just because you might end up killing yourself quite a lot. Then again, if you do find yourself getting a lot of shots all first on enemies, well then I do highly suggest this weapon. The only reason why I don't highly suggest this weapon in the PvP world for some is because of that draining perk that it has. It can really tear you up in the PvP world. But me personally, I love this weapon in the PvP world. I was just saying for some, this might not be your favorite weapon to use just because of that draining perk once again that it has. But I guess that's about wrapping up this video everybody. This has been your rifle and in this video could you guys show some love to get me a past 50 likes. It'll be much appreciated everyone. The continued support continues to help my channel grow and for that I can't thank you all enough. You guys have showed me a lot of amazing support. But once again, I'm out of here. As always, Guardians, remember to stay safe and don't sleep in pee, of course. Peace out.